Hello everybody, um, AOG Gaming here. I have a new science video. Um, so I've been thinking about a lot fusion reactors and um, I think I may have found a solution to make a feasible fusion reactor. It'll be small scale, at least for now, because testing it at large scales will require lots and lots of money. But at smaller scale, I think it could not only be financially feasible, but also it would create consistent fusion. Um, so before I like, you know, start going on tangents and stuff, um, I want to show you guys a couple of things that made me come to this idea. So first, we're going to go to quantum locked magnets. So I was just thinking about quantum locking because a tokamak is basically a giant magnet. That's essentially what it is. Sure, there's plasma on the inside and you're containing it with very specific magnetic fields. However, the entire thing itself is basically a giant magnet. So I was thinking of maybe scaling down that fusion reactor and somehow being able to quantum lock the entire compartments where the fusion is being produced. Now that sounds really hard, but if you scale it down, it sounds a lot easier and actually doable. So the thing is you have to use a lot of liquid nitrogen to cool down the magnets. So the having plasma in the center will basically counteract the heat that your well will counteract the cold that is keeping the magnet quantum locked. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because fusion reactors, as of right now, they're missing one vital component that I think would make them very good at fusion, and that is artificial gravity. The fact that we have to not only suspend the plasma, but keep it contained, because plasma itself wants to expand, like, that's just its tendency. The reason why the sun doesn't do that is because of its gravity. It's very strong, so it just pulls everything in. However, plasma can still escape if it has enough energy, like all the solar flares that we have. Um, that's also due to some magnetic field disturbances and reverse polarities. That, that's more complicated than we need to get to it. But basically, plasma acts like an even stronger dissipation than gas. So it'll just push towards the walls and in every direction. The real way to minimize this, in my opinion, effectively and cheaply, is probably using artificial gravity by spinning the entire tokamak. I know that sounds, you know, crazy. However, I do believe it is possible. So if you look at a quantum magnet, quantum okay, lock magnet. Today I'm going to be showing you the so we don't need to listen to any of what he's saying. I I've it's pretty much just freezing a magnet and spinning it. So, as you can see, he quantum locked the bottom magnet. Interesting. So, there's two ways to do this. Either one, you can use liquid nitrogen to completely quantum lock the tokamak, which I think would be a little bit easier because you have to use the liquid nitrogen anyway to cool down the magnets because the plasma will be very close to them so that you know, the walls don't melt and then the fusion reaction ends. Um, so this is cool. So you quantum lock the bottom magnet and the one on the top is simply just spinning. So this would basically be having a massive magnet at the bottom of the tokamak reactor, quantum locking it. And then I guess you would use rotors or something on the outside to basically spin. Or honestly, you could use um the magnet itself, the quantum lock magnet, you would just have to spin it. But you could lose heat through, you know, air friction, or you could lose temperature through friction or whatever, or gain temperature. Um, so a cool way to counteract that would be actually just spinning the top magnet. So now, um, I don't know if he's going to show us what I want to see. Okay, yeah, no, that's not what I want to see. So, I mean, he's showing this, which is not what I want to see. I want to see just a magnet spinning itself. 
and then he explains the process a little bit more. Um, it's a good video to watch if you want to know how quantum lock locking works. But um, basically, you have the magnet on top, and it's just going to spin very fast. Um, and this can create what we call angular gravity, or usually what they have as artificial gravity on space modules and spacecraft. So that, um, and it's easy to create because you create a sp sp spin tri uh, centrifugal force, and that pushes everything outwards basically from the center. Why that's good is because you have to put less energy into the center magnets to keep the plasma away from the center of the um, tokamak. The only problem is we don't know how quantum locking will affect the plasma itself. There might be some tweaks needed here and there, but basically that. Now, a way to effectively quantum lock the top magnet. So instead of having the bottom magnet, that's not the tokamak, just the magnet itself that is just used for the quantum locked um, gravity, or sorry, magnetic field. Um, now you quantum lock the tokamak, but the difficulty in that is the temperature because it it's very hot, like trillions and trillions of Kelvin. <laughs> so I thought that hmm, maybe there is a way to use a magnetic solution that also has great thermal conductivity, but also um, thermal insulation so that the liquid nitrogen does absorb the heat, but the heat transfer is a lot more controlled. Guess what fluid is perfect for this and is made by NASA and is very well studied. Not only that, but it interacts with magnetic fields, so I'm sure there's a way to capitalize on that. Um, sorry, it was uh, Google. Anseotropic materials have high thermal conductivity in some directions and low thermal conductivity in other directions. This means they can simultaneously dissipate heat from a hot spot, local overheating in directions with high thermal conductivity while providing thermal insulation to other directions. Why is this very important? Because ferrofluid. If you search up ferrofluid, I'm not going to search it up for you. Everyone should know what that is. It's basically what they use for fuel in NASA um, or to pump fuel in NASA because it's magnetic. So it's very easy to control. Um, it's an anseotropic material. And the best part about it is it also interacts with magnetic fields. So... Going home from that, this is probably going to help every fusion company out there, I'm assuming. But simply, you have the quantum lock magnet here, and you have you can have either one big one, just a, a regular, um, what's a donut magnet they call it, or you can have multiple magnets and have them basically push the plasma towards the outside, just another way to increase or help the plasma go towards the wall that will have the um, ferrofluid with the nitrogen. And basically you would build it something like this. Maybe you have them not you know, overlapped on each other, but side by side and in little tubes. So maybe like this is like the outside wall. So you have like here two parts and then the ferrofluid is here. Then the liquid nitrogen is here. And then the inside is over here and then the outside's out here, obviously. Um, but this might cause some problems. So, you know, there's some engineering that needs to be done into it. Obviously, I don't have the materials or lab to do this. If I did, I would probably be able to find a solution. And, you know, I'm still like, in college, so this, this is going to take a while. Um, but this is, I have a lot of theories on how to make this possible. And I think it is. Um, so now another way to do this, if this, you know, these two modes don't work, um, oh, I realized I don't have to take a video if I'm on camera. That's really good Um, because I'm screen recording. So, yeah, I don't know why this goes sideways, though. So I do apologize. So, yeah, so ferrofluid, then liquid nitrogen. Um, But you don't have to have the ferrofluid completely covering the inside of the uh, tokamak because you want the liquid nitrogen to dissipate some of the heat, but you want to keep 
some of the heat dissipated through the ferrofluid because it will be very close contact with the liquid nitrogen and it'll also be oh, okay so it does go away <laughs> just making sure um it does go away with um the ferrofluid because the ferrofluid is very highly thermally conductive and then it can insulate the heat in some spots so you're basically making a controlled thermal um well control thermal I don't know what's the word. I, I'm not going to use big science words because I might screw it up. Um, but yeah, and then another way is just basically having tubes go like this in succession all around. So basically what you would do with the magnets anyway, you know, you have the some tokamaks have ring magnets and the plasma is in the center here and it goes all the way around like that. Um, and there's ring magnets all the way around. Instead... Well, having those ring magnets as well, but next to them you have the ferrofluid and then liquid nitrogen. Something like that would be revolutionary. I don't understand why people are not using ferrofluid in, well, I mean, yeah, it in, in uh, to tokamaks because I do believe there's a massive potential, not only because they can react with the magnetic field produced by, you know, the magnets, um, but it can also be, it's an also an anisotropic material. Now, the quantum lock part, I don't know how much can do with the ferrofluid, but I do believe it'll still help because it is just a thermal problem rather than a um, physical problem, which is the fact that the plasma wants to expand in every direction. Now you can have it contained in one direction because when you have it, basically spinning with the centrifugal force basically like this whatever direction you need it to go um that was a very badly drawn arrow well let's just do that so basically spinning in one direction over and over again um it'll push towards the outside just naturally because that's how gravity works um it goes in the direction of the well no not exactly but it's just how it works when you're spinning something really fast. The gravity tends to push outwards. Um, now this is very important because the plasma also wants to hit the inside of the reactor, which is why you got magnets on the center and it stops the, um, stops the plasma from basically hitting the walls. So I was thinking something like this. So instead of the plasma going both directions, now this arrow is bigger, this one here, so the gravity is pushing it more towards this side, and this arrow is reduced. So this magnets, these magnets, well, specifically the ones that are pushing the plasma inwards, you don't have to spend as much energy powering them because now you have that gravity effect. Now, you know, everyone says that it would take more energy to spin the tokamak, a lot more energy, so we'd be wasting even more, which is why I came up with the idea of the quantum locking because that effectively gives it zero friction when it's spinning if you've seen any videos um you know what let's just go to youtube and, and find the video it's very it's very simple so um quantum locking so yeah there's that video um so quantum levitation that was Basically, my whole um, reactor video before this, but yeah, so it's trapped. It's amazing. You can basically orient it in any direction you want, which is insane if you think about it. And um, yeah, so there's the spinning. As you can see, it does still have some friction. There's the air friction, obviously, but it's just the fact that it's almost a perpetual motion machine. I'm not going to, it's definitely not a perpetual motion machine. Don't quote me on that. But the fact that it can do this with minimal resistance, basically none, I think is a whole nother stepping stone towards how we can view and fuse plasma into rings. Because honestly, my idea of sun forging is probably going to take a few more decades. Like this is going to take a while. Um, just because of the amount of energy and fusion that we need in order to make an actual ball of plasma and also all the physics behind it because there's a lot of physics needed. Um, 
and of course I dumbed not dumbed down but um made the physics a little bit more easier to understand on how that this would work so you have the plasma rings they're basically spinning and they would hit this um plasma ball in the middle basically what they did at the Livermore um institute or laboratory where they made a giant ball of fusion um, with a ton of lasers and then got more energy than they put in so we're basically there guys literally all we need is a way to ther to have a very good thermal conductivity so that we're not wasting a ton of liquid nitrogen every single time we power these things um two the magnets themselves so that they're not overheating we have or you know using a lot of energy we have to figure out how to minimize the amount of energy we're pouring into these magnets and then three i think it's the gravity we still haven't figured out that this quantum spinning or this quantum locking and then the quantum spin is what i'm calling it quantum lock spin um can not only levitate it but make it spin with minimal resistance which is such such an amazing thing like i don't know why people aren't researching this and if they are then um why not tell people about it because um well i mean i'm sure they want to make money and um yeah that's pretty much all i have for this video um uh, actually we'll click on there so that's the fusion pellet i was talking about with the donor rings and then as soon as they come close enough then you know you ignite the fusion pellet and get enough energy into the system to continue the fusion um maybe this can be a way for pulse fusion it doesn't have to be a way to um or or short-term fusion basically the plasma rings will allow for sustained fusion for a short period of time and then the fusion pellet itself with the fusion ball or the center of the fusion with the more energy will just provide it will be basically basically be the catalyst to keep that fusion going and provide enough heat and energy so that the fusion continues so yeah those are my thoughts and ideas you guys can comment down below and um yeah i think we're very close to uh breaking this whole fusion thing especially since now we figured out quantum atom interactions with a quantum computer maybe i'll make a video on that but um yeah we'll talk about that later but yeah this is pretty much what I'm thinking with the um, quantum locking of the tokamak or the bottom magnet because you can still float things on top and still spin them because the quantum locking works both ways, which is a very interesting effect. Didn't think about that, did you, scientists? Um, oh, well, why is this like that? Okay, well, anyway, um, thank you guys for watching as always. And I will see you guys later.